Good morning. Merry Christmas. Yes, our Christmas celebration is far from over. We still have some time left before we enter into the season of Epiphany, with Epiphany coming on January 6th. So the lights are still up, and we are still uh, very much uh, here to proclaim our Savior's birth. We'll begin with one of our beloved Christmas hymns, Angels from the Realms of Glory, and invite you to sing along. I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if if we we confess confess our our sins, sins, God, God, who who is faithful faithful and just, will forgive forgive our our sins sins and and cleanse us us from from all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most Most merciful merciful God, we we confess confess that that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean. We have have sinned sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I have more understanding than all of my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through Through your your precepts, precepts, I get get understanding. understanding. Therefore, I I hate hate every false way. Glory Glory be to the the Father, and and to the Son, and and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now, and and will will be forever. forever. Amen. I have more understanding than all of my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And also also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now sing our hymn of praise. This is the feast we remain standing.
Old Testament reading appointed for this, the second Sunday after Christmas, comes from the book of 1 Kings, the third chapter, and tells us how Solomon received his wisdom. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, And have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days." And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. We now say the gradual together. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The epistle reading appointed for today comes from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, We're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the Alleluia and verse. Please stand. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You You have have the the words words of of eternal eternal life. life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. 
The gospel that we are about to hear will serve as the basis for the sermon for today. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feasts of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We are now seated as we sing our hymn of the day within the Father's house. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Imagine yourself as Jesus in today's gospel lesson. It sounds like he purposefully stays behind. Now imagine being 12 years old without your parents in Jerusalem for five days. What? would you do? Where would you go? Remember now, you're growing up in Nazareth, a small town where there's not lots of things to do and not lots of things to see. Not a lot happening in Nazareth. But Jerusalem 
Where do you start? The marketplace? Herod's palace? Three fortified towers, nearly a, one nearly 150 feet tall, that protected the western part of the city? Why not check out the theater in the south central part of Jerusalem, built to entertain wealthy Jews with Greek and Roman drama? You don't want to miss the glorious aqueducts, the bridges. You don't want to miss all of the public monuments. Oh, say in the upper city, there are marble villas and palaces of the rich that stand out and capture the imagination and the eye. And while you're there in the upper city, you can also see two large arched passageways crossing from the upper city to the temple. Oh my, I forgot about the Hippodrome. Chariot races, anybody? And that's just on the inside of Jerusalem. The long, difficult ascent from Jericho to the holy city ended as the traveler rounded the Mount of Olives and suddenly caught the view of vista unlike many others in the world. Just very unique, gorgeous. And across the Kidron Valley, set among the surrounding hills, is Jerusalem. The perfection of beauty. In the words of Lamentations, the joy of all the world. Now put yourself in the place of Mary and Joseph in today's gospel lesson. As they travel away from Jerusalem, a day's journey, Jesus is not with them. Just think of the panic. And it's not like they had lost Jesus at Target or a Coles or a Best Buy or the mall. No, they had gone, again, a day's journey away from Jerusalem. And you know what that meant? They had a day's journey ahead of them to return to Jerusalem before they can even begin their search for Jesus. And they begin their search. But Jesus is not at the Hippodrome. They didn't see him checking out the aqueducts or the bridges or looking at the monuments around Jerusalem. He wasn't at the theater. He wasn't at the citadel or the towers. He wasn't at the palace. He wasn't at the marketplace. For three long days, Joseph and Mary search for Jesus. Where could he be? And can you imagine those prayers? Oh, please, God, let us find Jesus. And they did find Jesus. In the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And he must have been teaching them too, because all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When they find him, though, Mary has a question for Jesus. Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And Jesus responds, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Literally, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now, that sounds a little snarky to me. I'm a parent. That sounds a little snarky. But Jesus isn't smarting off here. He is proclaiming that he would do exactly what the father intended. Jesus was found exactly where Jesus was supposed to be. Not by human standards, but by the Heavenly Father's standards. Yes, according to his human nature, Jesus would commit himself to reading, marking, learning, inwardly digesting God's word. More than that, as the God-man, he would be living in and embodying his standing as the Word of God made flesh, who came to testify to the truth, who proclaimed the full counsel of God's Word, who would turn away those who hear from their sin and toward God's forgiveness and salvation found in Him. 
Of course Jesus would be in the temple. Of course he would be in his father's house doing his father's business. Already a rabbi and teacher of the word at just 12 years old. You might recall, but this isn't the last time that people thought Jesus was lost. And it's because they weren't thinking that he must be about his father's business. After Jesus had been crucified and after he died on the cross, the women and his disciples come to his tomb searching for him. But he's not there. But they hadn't remembered what Jesus had told them. And they just couldn't believe that Jesus could overcome his brutal death and the coldness of the grave. So John chapter 20 records this. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. That's John. And she said to them, now listen, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple. And they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple, that is John, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he, Jesus, must rise from the dead. Of course the disciples, of course the women are in great distress, not knowing where in the world Jesus would be, Jesus could be, Because they did not remember that he would be about his father's business and what the father in the scriptures had said and what Jesus himself had said. For Mary Magdalene, the story becomes especially poignant. Let me continue in John chapter 20. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, here it is again, they have taken away my Lord. They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, Mary said to him again, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus wasn't missing, not at all. Jesus wasn't gone. Jesus suffered, died, rose again, then appeared to the women and his disciples just as he said. Jesus also told Mary not to cling to him too tightly because he would also be about the Father's business to ascend to him, going back to the Father. But he wouldn't be gone, he wouldn't be missing. Instead, he would be with his church and tell his church to do his father's business, to baptize and to teach. Through these things, he would be with his disciples. He would be with his church. Always to the very end of the age. Jesus also commands these same disciples to celebrate a new and greater Passover where he would be intimately with them, giving his very body and blood 
for the forgiveness of sins. We're no better in terms of finding Jesus. We often don't know where to look. Like Joseph and Mary, like the women, and Mary Magdalene, like the eleven. We often get into a panic because we can't find God in our lives. We look high and low, far and wide, up and down. We look for a feeling, a sign, anywhere and everywhere. We look to nature, to pleasure, all sorts of things and all sorts of places to find God in our lives. And what do we do then? We grouse and complain to Jesus. Why have you treated us so? We've been in great distress looking for you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God's word, Christ's words, point us in the right direction. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? Or didn't you know that I had to be about my father's business, doing my father's business? Christ's words to his earthly parents are still of great relevance to us today. Because in his father's house is exactly where Jesus has promised to be for you and for me. In the waters of holy baptism, in, with, and under the bread and the wine, in the supper that he instituted for the church and commanded his people to observe. In the preaching and teaching of God's word, here we find Jesus fully present, fully giving himself to you through the means of grace. Here he is, bringing you the forgiveness of sins caring for you, abiding with you, and coming to you. Yes, through faith, we know exactly where to find our Lord and Savior Jesus. In the Father's house, doing the Father's business. And that's exactly where Jesus wants you to be, to receive Him. Amen. I mean, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in faith, Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we stand and we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only only begotten begotten Son of God, God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your Son, the eternal Word, became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world, that many more with us would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the Word of God and grew in wisdom and stature, submissive to his earthly parents and about your business and in your house. Keep the families of your church eager to be found among your word and sacrament, always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us in Christ, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Preserve your church by the preaching of the gospel of salvation and the seal of the promised Holy Spirit in baptism. Raise up among us faithful preachers to the praise of Christ's glory, until we acquire the inheritance promised us in Him. Lord, in Your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, You gave to Your servant Solomon unsurpassed wisdom to rule Your people Israel, chiefly the wisdom that begins in fearing You. Give to all our nations elected and and appointed officials wisdom for their task to discern between good and evil and to govern this people in peace and quietness. Lord, in Your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, give patience, endurance to all who are sick or in need, especially for Kevin Meyer, Sue, uh, Diane Lee, Craig and Sue Kepi, Don McCabe, Monterey Morse, Heather Mum, Betty Gerald, Gene Enright, Stacy Lorth, Tracy Tripke, as well as for Frank, the brother of Judy Seldine, for Marianne, Yehida, Melissa, and David, Dwayne, Mary Lou, Irene, James, Ruth, and JP, Brody, Lynn, Adam, Kurt, Vic, John, Hope, Gwen, Shirley, and Paul. John, Mary, Carmine, Lloyd, and Skip. Marilyn, Scott, Dennis, Dee, Diane, Irene, Annie, and Harold. Deanna, Julie, Peg, Oliver, Maverick, and Tom. Renee, Mike, Pam, Braden, Cameron, and Amy. As well as for Pam, John, Donnie, Denise, Pam, and Rhonda. Heal them according to your will. Receive our thanksgiving for every blessing and kindness that you have shown to your people. Also comfort all those who mourn, especially Uh, Sharon Ring and her family at the loss of Lynn, and Kim Gilman and her family at the loss of her stepmom, Mary. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we sing the offertory, Gracious God, you send great blessings. We continue with the celebration of the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And And also also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them them to the Lord. Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to to give give him him thanks thanks and and praise. praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory. 
that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things that are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of Christ's body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feasts of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. We now sing the Agnus Dei, Lamb of God.
Please stand as we sing the Pulse Communion Canticle, thank the Lord, and sing his praise. We'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast, His steadfast love, love endures, endures forever. forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your divine mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for just a few announcements for this week. Well, we do invite those who have placed poinsettias, those lovely poinsettias in honor and memory of someone to come into the church and take those home. Make sure you do that. Uh, we are also um, coming up to the time when we'll be taking down Christmas decorations. Uh, that will be happening on uh, uh, today, actually, um, um, after service at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. to take those down. So please, uh, please come to the church and help out as you're able. Christmas music will remain up on the website that you can uh, listen to there, as well as several devotionals that still have some time left uh, in, in terms of you, you being able to use those, so you can pick those up. I uh, wanted to remind people that Sunday school does resume today, and that we'll be switching places with uh, the kids and the adults. So the adults will be in the sanctuary, and the kids will be in the fellowship hall. So that's a big change. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. If you have not yet picked up your envelopes, uh, please do so. For those of you who are at home, please come into the church and pick those up. Uh, portals of prayer are available. Our sock and mitten tree still is in need of new mittens, caps, scarves, and gloves for both kids and adults. So uh, please be aware of that. Uh, our, our food pantry is running low as well. So we could use canned fruit, uh, tuna, rice box mis mixes, potato pouches, things of, the, of that nature. So please help us restock our shelves here. Our upcoming memory verse challenge, boy, for this week, January 3rd, a little bit longer, but it's Joel 2.32, and that, though, here are the words for that. It shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape as the Lord has said. And among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Joel 2.32. You can find that on our website uh, if you so desire. I believe we're all out of calendars for our youth. Thank you so much for supporting our youth. Uh, we very much appreciate it. And uh, we wish you a very happy new year and a blessed week in the name of our Lord Jesus. Uh, may you find uh, comfort and joy and rest in him this week. Amen. Amen.